Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Now You Know. On this episode, we're gonna be moving out the old and moving in the new. Okay, so what are we getting rid of? So we're gonna be getting rid of the Grove 1.0. This is the early edition of the Grove. A lot of stuff was learned while using this, while growing um, some food for our family. And so now it's time to switch over to the 2.0 because we've learned so much. Yeah, so uh, we gotta get rid of all, well, not get rid of, we're gonna move you guys to the new 2.0. How's that sound? And so we gotta get all the water out of here, mm -hmm. all the medium, these are two units, so we gotta move them. So you're gonna see us do that and then uh, move the new unit over here. Okay, so we just got our package from Grove that comes with your Grove and there's this nice installation guide. So this talks about all the things that have come with it. We have gotten our hydrogen clay pebbles, our container, a whole packet of fish supplies, and we got this installation kit, seeds, water conditioner, installation guide, the gravel, um, the chemistry adjuster, stickers. We got a bacteria test kit. We got our bacteria kickstart kit. We got our pH test kit. We got our plant care kit, and we got some handy container things that'll hold all of our different bottles and such. This introduces us to our ecosystem, and then here's some important stuff here, the setup and installation. So our first step that we're gonna be doing next is connecting to Wi-Fi via the Grove OS. So at the moment, they don't have this on Android, but maybe by the time you're watching this, they will. So we're using an Apple iPod. All right, so. First step is to install the Grove OS from the Apple App Store. All right, so now we're gonna open the Grove OS uh, and we'll sign in. Next, we should plug in our ecosystem. Fun. All right, so I found the plug back here. Nice. Let's remove this tape. Looks like they give you a number of feet of cord, which is good. All right, plug it in. Ooh, glowing light. I think this changes color. Ooh. So when the Grove OS instructs you to do so, go to your phone settings and select new Grove Wi-Fi network. So let's connect our Grove and let's start the setup. So make sure the Wi-Fi is turned on and choose a network below. So let's see. Oh, here's the Grove. So we're connected to it. All right, so now this brings us back. All right, so now we're gonna select the, I think we're gonna be selecting the Wi-Fi network that we want this to be connected to. Our Grove ecosystem is connecting. It says it'll take about a minute. And so will this light change after it's done connecting? Yeah, I'm not sure. I was waiting for sky data. What is sky data? Is that like Skynet? I don't know. It's talking to the headquarters. It's confirming ownership. Confirming ownership. Are we the owners? Uh, yeah. All right, so now we're connected to the Wi-Fi. So we've completed the first step. Let's continue. Welcome to Grove, let's get started. The magic starts in your aquarium. Slide it up. Oh, cool. Whoa, the light just turned on. Nice. So this is sort of explaining how a Grove works. Um, we know how the Grove works, but you might not. So let's go through it. Nutrients enter the ecosystem through the fish food. The fish process the food into ammonia-rich waste. Pumps circulate the nutrient-rich water into the garden bed where bacteria... Oops, skipped it. <laughs> this is your garden bed. Raise the lights by pulling it upwards. Whoa! Uh, this is really nice light. I don't know if you can look up in there, but you can see that there's all these different colored lights. Yeah, I can see that. So you're getting all these different wavelengths and frequencies. It almost feels like sunlight on my hand. That's so cool. So the plants absorb the nutrients through their roots, filtering them out of the water. Well-fed plants grow quickly so you can harvest and enjoy. It's called aquaponics. Your grove starts from a lifeless state and builds over time into a thriving ecosystem. Your first step is to grow the bacteria that make the magic happen. Until that piece is in place, do not add fish. Ready to bring it to life? Let's continue. So we're going to add the pebbles and gravel to start the tutorial. This is a great tutorial, so let's follow it. Set up your garden bed and aquarium before adding water. 
Why the clay pebbles? They hold moisture, nurture roots, and have plenty of nooks and crannies for bacteria to live in. So let's slowly pour all three bags of clay pebbles directly into the top of the garden bed. All right, so this is not the final resting place of our grove. No. Um, that'll be over there where the old grove used to be, so we're gonna move that over real quick. All right, so we're about to rinse all of our pebbles. Um, we're going to be using our filtered water because we don't want to kill any of the bacteria when we um, sort of introduce the water that we have in our old grove into our new grove. And our unfiltered water has chlorine in it, which could kill those bacteria. So let's do that now. All right, so the method that we're using right now is to sort of cut the top of the bag off and then fill the bag with filtered water and then to sort of mix it around using our hands and then dump it into the colander to strain away all of the dirty water. So this is the kind of stuff that we wanted to avoid having in our grove um, and that's why we rinse them. All right, so the next step is to pour both bags of aquarium gravel directly into the aquarium. So that's what we are, are going to do. Pretty gravel. Look at that. That's, that not just, that's not just any old gravel. That's pretty. That's pretty gravel. Alright, so now we're just spreading out the gravel along the bottom of the fish tank. Make sure it looks nice and pretty. Pretty, pretty for our fishes. Looks good. Okay, so we're using a siphon to fill up our jug down here. Um, a siphon works by using the difference in height between uh, the tank in here. So the level of water in the tank in, in here is higher than in here. So what you do is you suck some water up into the tube um, and then basically it's it wants to flow down and so it'll, it'll flow up in order to go down. It's a really cool physical um, you know, phenomenon. Yeah, you might get some water in your mouth, but just keep in mind it's what fish put in their mouth. So I got a little tip for you if you're trying to uh, siphon off your tank and you don't have to stop and then re-siphon get two containers and then as soon as one of the containers is full you can just keep the siphon going switch it over to the second container you can actually close the siphon with oh, your finger so just as a better tip you can just put your foot over this yep keep it low keep it low put it here and the siphon. no spilling no spilling super pro tip super pro all right, so now we're gonna be filling our new grove with the old grove water. Um, and this is awesome, because it's gonna be really kickstarting our system. All of this is full of great organic material, full of bacteria that's gonna be breaking down the, the fish waste. Um, so I'm just draining it out now. So the water that Dusty's pouring from above comes down into this side chamber and gets filtered through that pre-filter, it looks like, before entering the fish tank. All right, so now we are going to, we've got about, what would you say, three or four inches on the bottom of our tank. Uh -huh. We're gonna siphon off probably about five gallons from our 15 gallon fish tank so that the fish will have enough water. So Jesse is putting the tube into their tank. So if you submerge a vast majority of the siphoning tube into the water, right, and then you block off the end of the tube, it'll act a lot like a soda straw allowing you to transfer over some of the water and starting the siphon without having to use your mouth. Wow, I like that tip. Yeah, it's a lot cleaner. Oh, he's gonna put it into the pre-filter. Now he's thinking. This way it'll filter stuff out. All right, so Jesse has volunteered to do this next step, which is to move fishies from one tank which they don't like to do. <laughs> so now we're siphoning off the water from the old fish tank into the new fish tank. And we've got all the fish transferred over. All right, so we are dumping in some new spring water. and filling up the rest of our grove. All right, so we're pretty confident that our 
levels are good in our fish tank. So the ammonia, the nitrite and nitrates, as well as pH, um, because this is mostly water from our old growth. Um, but just to make sure, we're gonna do um, all these different tests. Um, testing for ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, and pH. So let's take a look and see how they do. So what are you doing now? So right now I'm just filling up these um, testers, test tubes, up to the white line. Now Jesse's testing for ammonia. So first you add in solution number one and you give it a shape. Remove the cap and you add solution number two. And you're looking for a color change? Yes. And this will tell you if there's too much or too little ammonia in the water? So the ammonia is formed by the fish waste. And the fish waste is what the plants use, yep. right? So if there's too much fish waste, they'll, they'll, it's not good for the fish. Well, the fish, the fish waste needs to get converted into nitrites and then nitrates oh. by bacteria. So um, the ammonia is just the first step in the process. Gotcha. So this gives you an indication if, if everything's going well with the water. Right. But I mean, so when you have that color in the tube, how do you know if it's a good color or a bad color? Um, we have a sheet that will tell us. Oh. So I'm just doing all the different tests. So this was the nitrite test. And now we'll do a nitrate test, and then we'll do a pH test. That's cool. So the um, tubes, the test tubes are kept near their bottle, so you know what they're test for. Right. And are we also testing for pH? Yep. So what are you looking at now? So now I'm just trying to see what our pH is, what our pH level is. And so you compare it on a chart? Yeah, so there's all these different colors. This is the pH, and then we're going to be checking uh, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. And so um, what's our pH? So, I'm looking here. pH appears to be about 7.2. Alright, so you just tested for nitrates and ni ammonia and pH. And what did you f find out? Um, so first, the ammonia test shows that there's about uh, 0.5 parts per million ammonia. That's pretty good. That's not too high. It's not too low. Um, so the fish aren't going to mind and the microbes are going to be able to start breaking it down. Um, there weren't any nitrites, um, so the microbes have just barely been keeping up with breaking them down because um, I think in our last grove this tomato plant was sucking up all the nutrients because um, it was the only plant left and it was just going wild. Then the nitrates, uh, we have zero. Again because the tomato plant was sucking them up. Right, so in a, in, if we come back in a little while, in a few days, um, we'll notice that the nitrates level have, have gone up because um, the tank is now full of, of microbacteria that are going to be breaking down the ammonia into its different parts. Alright, so I just pulled out our old grove sort of tester, um, but I, what I didn't notice is that on the new app... Oh, so there's a, a, a color scale right on the app? Oh, cool. So you can just open up your app, hold the bottle there, and yeah. see what color it is. That's neat. Yeah. And the light shines through it and everything. Right, it's really nice. That's nice. So with our last app, you, uh, I mean with our last Grove, um, when there was data, you had to just enter it on a piece of paper and stuff, right? Yep. And what, what does this do differently? So, I mean, now I get to actually see which color it is. And once I have selected the type that I want, I hit the next button. Oh, and it stores the data for you? Yeah, and then it'll That's give cool. us a nice little graph after we're done. Hopefully. That's cool. Okay, so last step here is to plant some seeds. These are some radish seeds. We're going to use them as microgreens. So we're going to chop them off pretty young and eat them. Um, so we're just going to plant a few here um, while we're waiting for our other seeds that we've ordered to arrive. So we're just going to sprinkle them in here. I just want a little corner of our bed to be radish seeds. Have fun growing. Oh, and so then the, the very last step is lowering the light, you'll see that it gets a little bit brighter. So we want it to be about three inches off of the bed. So right now it's good. the whole grove is gonna look a little funky because it's gonna be nice and low like this. We're getting as much light as we possibly can into those seeds. Hopefully they grow soon.